This video is about the game called Dota 2. From now on this content will take like 20-25% of the channel, but it will only make sense for you fully if you are familiar with the game or want to become familiar with it. And not I am not branching out to be a Dota 2 streamer. First of all, my PC is not good enough for it, secondly this channel is about programming. What is the magical thing a programmer wants to create around Dota? <laughs> Cheap scripts for Invoker of course, you can buy them $1 per month, the link is in the description. Joking. Those few people who play this beautiful, gorgeous, despicable snake pit of a game know how captivating it is in the process. Those who were trying to become better at once know how extremely tilting it is to tell yourself during the match searching process that you will focus on one particular aspect of the game, only to forget about it three minutes in because your lane is crumbling, your own gun going south, or your teammates mute baiting you with rap songs in the voice chat. How much better would I become instantly if I suddenly gain an ability to unautopilot? my brain after minute 20. How much better would I become if I find a way to take a magical question from BSG, write it down onto a sticky note and put directly into the center of my screen, while simultaneously gaining an ability to see through it? Well, I quickly skimmed something on the knee and the idea works. I then decided that if I still want to work on that on my spare time, why won't I make a separate channel activity out of it? Maybe we can even spark a small community project inside Dota community as a whole, and I will get some C-sharp practice. So, the idea. A small overlay dedicated to showing time reminders on the screen. It can be something really straightforward, for example, from minute 5 till minute 20, at 45 seconds mark, you will see a text reminding you to search a camp stuck nearby. It can be something more thought out, for example, 3 random times, from minute 20 till minute 40, you will get a reminder to unauthorize pilot. If we add some functional to work with game data, such as peaks, maybe we can set up a system that will, for example, detect a core bristleback in the enemy team and remind you to start thinking on who brings break mechanic into the game in your team at maybe minute 15. Disclaimer, I won't ever create it with the thought of providing an unfair advantage. No such timed reminder realistically can bring you further than 7k MMR and they are not created to do so. They are created to solve small annoying problems and to bake in habits. For for example, for a long time it was a problem for me to start checking my enemies' items regularly to hunt for Blink or BKB timings, etc. I can envision myself writing a reminder that will help me bake in the thin. Do I plan to play with it forever, gaining unfair advantage of seeing enemies' shakers blink in advance? Don't make me laugh. The real usage is to play with this reminder for like 50 games, then suddenly off it, and in theory my brain will get used to checking enemies' items regularly, so I will continue doing it. Nothing like mm, magical AI looking at your minimap telling you what should you do next in the game with stolen and resynthesized voice of BSG. <laughs> if a reminder is shown on the screen, there will be a JSON config somewhere that programs it to show at particular timings, and that JSON file is probably created by user themselves or in later editions maybe is constructed via some sexy interface. I don't make a cheat, I make a small crutch for the head of a player who desperately wants to become a little bit better but struggles because their monkey brain gets in the way. As for you all a part of the equation. Well, it will always be somewhat unclear with Valve because they don't answer emails. If I will be banned, well, I will be banned. You viewer is in 100% safe zone because firstly, such a software can't be detected with the type of anti cheats Valve uses, and secondly, because Valve directly enables the technology stack we use. Yep. We use Dota's game state integration server. We directly feed on the data that Valve themselves decided to share with the world. How it works is I create a config file somewhere in games folder and the running application of Dota 2 starts to spam a dedicated port on my PC with information on what is happening. There is a lot of stuff here, for example, we can casually get the information about in-game time from our code. Some of it works only in watched games, obviously, for example, when I watched a game, I can have the information about all 10 players inventories, but if I play a game myself, I can only get the data about my own account. The system is pretty clear and I feel safe. If one day Valve employee randomly sees this video and decides that we are too strong, they can just close the game clock's information from this data feed. This is a small availability test, yep. This record is done during my ranked game, as you can see I get the clock's information. As we are writing in C-sharp, we can get pretty low down native to OS and create some unholy windows that will be visible 
but also transparent, unclickable and unfocusable, so a potential reminder is a true overlay window. It will have a minimal impact on your ability to control shit in your Dota game with mouse. Now some meta information about the project. I don't want to create some heavily edited, time-consuming videos for it. In an ideal world I want to get out with streaming the process of creating it chilling with you friends, plus maybe a short demonstration reel once in a while when a version hits. Also of course we can discuss any Godot related stuff during those streams if anyone wants. The repo for the project is open and free, do whatever you want with it code-wise. I will be glad if we somehow ignite a spark in Dota community or get several project supporters, especially if they magically come pre-equipped with the sacred knowledge of creating sexy buttons with XML. However, there are some disclaimers and conditions I need to install before we start. First and the most important part, this is a journey project. In no way, shape or form, this is a tutorial series. My experience with C-Sharp is about 2000 lines throughout my life. I have some Java experience, but the last time I seriously wrote in Java was 3 years ago, and I am Rusty IF, and that's still a separate language. I will do stupid shit on a regular basis. I expect to bring ugly spaghetti into existence and painfully refactor it. I'm here for it. I'm here to learn basic shit about a new language. If you are new to it, take it with a grain of salt and don't learn from me, learn from my mistakes. If you are a C-sharp guru, I invite you to give advices and opinions and I will be grateful for them. However, there is a second important point. This right here will be a pattern-free zone. I won't talk about it too much here, you can ask me on the stream, but I have some strong opinions about frameworks, creation and architecture pattern usage. From what I gathered, everyone and their grandma will tell you that you need to use MVVM pattern to build double WPF applications nicely, and I consciously refuse to do it from the start. I will just try to face roll it into existence, taking turns as I see fit at the moment and making decisions with my own brain. Maybe in the end architecture will become a self-invented MVVM, maybe not. But if it will become it, it will become it because I got some bumps hit rolling from this hill and I acquired knowledge of the problems this architecture solves, not because I learned some cashier way to do shit from the start. This message also is targeted at potential project supporters. If you add any code, please don't use any dogma knowledge with it. Dogma knowledge is very good, I know it, but what I want to acquire is understanding of dogma knowledge within C Sharp, and it can't come if I work inside dogma from the start. Embrace the bullshit, it will be fun and we all will leave this place a little bit better. See you on the stream, if anyone comes.